Thank you. Thank you for joining us this Friday. I'm happy that you are here. And uh, please let us know how we can uh, better improve these courses. And we welcome your participation as well. Okay, feel free to comment and share your experiences. We are here to learn. And the best way to learn sometimes is from others, you know, sharing experiences. So we are the UNR Extension Business Development Program. My name is Juan Salas. And today we're going to be talking about cash flow report and taxes. Let me introduce you as well to my colleague, Reina Mendez. How are you doing, Reina? Good morning, Juan. I'm doing good. Thank you. So, Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us today. She's going to be uh, participating as well. Uh, let us know of any questions as we move along. So today, what's the mission? What you are here? We're going to talk about some financial statements. Uh, just a quick overview, but then we're going to zoom in into the cash flow report. We're going to talk about the benefits, limitations of that particular report. We're going to talk about a uh, cash conversion cycle. It is a very interesting concept that you should know about it, and um, especially the logic behind it. Okay. We're going to go through a, uh, an example about cash flow projections. And later on, at the end, we'll talk about some pitfalls and some suggestions, more like an action plan for you. Uh, so you can put all this education into action. Let's begin uh, with the State of Nevada Department of Business and Industry. This is your center of information regarding small businesses. Um, you can find a lot of resources free resources, remember free resources in this website and uh, download the roadmap. The roadmap, it is a fantastic tool PDF that you can download and it will um, show you the resources by category. Okay, you can uh, definitely explore that on your on your own and save it on your desktop is very, very helpful. Let's see, where's my mouse? There we go. So let's talk about this. Financial reports are probably not your favorite part of running a business. You know, it's like um, when you're driving a car and you're measuring all the time, you know, your air pressure, your oil, your gas, um, things are working per, uh, good. But it is very important and necessary to use them. Okay, so financial reports are something that we don't, we're, we're not looking forward <laughs> to, to do or understand when we jump into business, but it's definitely something that you must do and understand. Uh, it's about um, changing a little bit your, your mindset on how useful and the benefits of understanding the financial reports. And you're going to feel better about learning this. We have a bunch of financial reports, you know, balance sheet, cash flow, profit and loss. But here's the thing. They are probably the equivalent to your business card. Everybody's very, very um, proud or concerned about their business card, how it looks, uh, my logo, my website and everything else. But in the eyes of bankers, investors, lenders right now, they are going to look for this. They're going to, you're probably going to go walk into the bank and say, uh, here's my business card. Uh, this is my business. You have a nice business card, but let's look at your financial reports. Okay. That's what they want to see. That's your, um, that you have to show. That represents your financial stability and how feasible is your business and what's the situation of your business, okay? So let's take that into consideration um, that adds up to the relevance of the uh, profit and loss. Uh, we have somebody in the healthcare industry. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So... Sometimes we get asked, what is the most important report? You know, there are many reports out there. Uh, you can break it down 
Um, but which one is the most important? Uh, anybody wants to take a guess? Yes, no, profit and loss, balance sheets, cash flow. Okay. Basically, one report cannot tell the full story about your business. That's why there are so many. And that's why you should be combining reports in order to understand the situation of your business. One single report cannot provide a full story. Different reports are for certain purposes and uh, do not measure all your business structure, all your business um, healthy or unhealthy situation from the financial point of view. So let's start with the balance sheet. What is the balance sheet? It shows what the company owes, what the company owns, and what is left over in a specific uh, time. The balance sheet, it's, um, you are a, we have a certified financial coach as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. Um, the balance sheet, it's like a snap picture of a particular moment right there on time. It's like for a single moment in time, it takes a financial picture of your business and it will detail what the business owns. Uh, if it owes money to somebody, it's going to um, divide into assets, liabilities, owner's equity. And it's going to tell you how much cash is in the business. How well are the business owners getting paid? How much they put into the business and what's been the return for them. So it is a very specific set of uh, point in time snapshot of your financial report. Income statement. The income statement, it will measure the results over a period of time. This is very um, significant when we compare balance sheet to income statements. Balance sheets are more of a snapshot and the income statement is more like a period of time. So where we measure the performance, sales, expenses, and uh, how much is left over. And it will provide information about trends because it will cover a period of time. So you can see if sales are going up or down, a particular expense um, is more relevant in certain months and not others. It will help uh, for businesses that are um, cyclical. Okay, when things can come up and down depending on your on your time. Um, healthcare industries like that, uh, I think she was into Medicare sales, uh, landscaping, uh, construction sales, um, tax offices. I know about that. So it will measure the performance over a period of time. But today we came to talk about the cash flow statement. I wanted to review the other two because we are going to see what are the limitations of the cash flow and how you can compensate with the other reports as well. But we are going to focus more on the cash flow statement today. So it shows the money that comes into the business and goes out to the business. Pretty simple. I mean, the logic behind the cash flow, it's pretty simple. There's no too many accounting rules. There's not too many uh, debits and credits rules and things like that. The cash flow is something that the business owner feels and uh, it, it's, it's more familiar with, I think so, uh, with the cash flow because it's the money that is coming in and the money that is coming out, okay? But... The analysis of the cash flow will make you aware of many things. If the business has enough money on hand to cover day-to-day -day activities, pay debts on time, and maintain business without a negative cash flow, nobody wants to um, nobody wants to pay late fees or make check without funds exactly, or start using the credit card and you know, accrue interests and, uh, and interest and interest and interest. So the cash flow will give you that perspective 
how much do you need to cover your daily expenses? How much do you need to cover your debts that are coming that you already incurred? How can you maintain your business um, liquidity, liquid? If an opportunity comes, how can I cover for that service? If I have to um, provide a service, do I have enough funds to cover my, my expenses right now to provide that service and wait until I get paid? So those are some of the points why the cash flow um, statement is very important. Now, we're going to go into the details of a cash flow. What are the elements that come into a cash flow? Because um, when we when we um, talk about cash flow and we try to simplify it as um, money coming in and money just coming out, we kind of lose the perspective of why the bankers and the investors ask for the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement has different parts, have different sections. And any investor or any or some or or you, when you are analyzing, you have to understand the different parts of the cash flow. So uh, it will provide you more insight about your business. Um, sometimes you need to know if you need more working capital. What are the maximum loan payments that the business can afford? If you have control of your cash flow, you are in a better position to take a loan. Do you know when to not take a loan as well? Okay. So what are the parts or sections of the cash flow statement? We have the operating activities. We have the investing activities. And we have the financing activities. All these sections, operating, investing, financing, have their cash in, cash out and you can come up with a net change. Cash in, cash out, net change, cash in, cash out, net change. But these different sections will measure different things on how the money or why the money is coming in and why is the money coming out? What's the purpose of the money coming in and what's the purpose of the, coming, of the money coming out? That is why we separate the cash flow into sections so we can better uh, focus or um, dissect the purpose of the money and, and the activities that come in and come out. So an overall will provide us a total net change, okay? But anybody that's going to analyze your cash flow statement is going to try to divide the cash flow report, operating, investing, financing activities. Okay, and at the end, you're gonna have the total uh, net change. Uh, we have some comments, hey, thank you. So let's start with the first section, cash flow from operations. This section is going to measure the cash generated from the core business or operations of the business. So the operation section of the cash flow is going to measure the cash in from sales and products and services and the cash out from direct or indirect operational costs. So if I sell, uh, if I provide a service for um, for construction, you know, what's gonna be um, my the money coming in for services, and what's gonna be my money coming out for the products that I have to buy, the labor that I have to um, hire and pay for, maybe have to rent some equipment as well. So you only take those ex those um, positive and those negative amounts in the cash from operations. Why? Because it shows the core sales that can support the general operations. The operational section of the cash flow can tell you 
is the business enough or is it okay to support itself? It's one of the main indicators about solvency of the business. You know, how the activity is performing through a period of time. Is it the services, is it the products sales enough to cover the operational, okay? Uh, yeah. Sometimes you can see it as, is my time that I invest, my time that I, that I have to produce and all the materials worth, worth it to come up with the net amount, okay? Investing activities. It shows the purchase and sale of long-term investments. This section might be relevant to some businesses and not so important to other businesses, okay? It depends on your industry and the type of uh, business that you have. But for example, we have examples um, of equipment, property, uh, upgrades and remodeling. So if you are in an industry that is heavy on equipment, you're going to definitely need this section because it's going to show how much money you have to put in into equipment, how much money you have to put into uh, tools, assets that are going to, first of all, are expensive. <laughs> and uh, somebody from construction can definitely back me up on this. And uh, also that uh, you are producing from this particular asset. Some people might um, be willing or thinking about buying their own building or buying an expensive um, production. Uh, we have uh, some, some business owners that had to buy um, a big graphic printer to, to print banners and to bring a big signs and things like that. You're talking about a $300,000 investment to buy this kind of a printer. So it will definitely go into the investing activities. The thing is that um, it will include assets with the intention to make money. And generally, it is a negative amount. Why? Because you can see the money coming out in this section, but not too much money coming in, okay? Let me see if I have that. But uh, why? Because the only reason this section is gonna show uh, a positive amount, a net positive change, is, is because you are selling these assets. And that doesn't happen very often. So if in this particular section of investing activities, it is a negative amount, it's not so bad because you are investing, hopefully a good purchase uh, on assets to make money, okay? So if you go to a bank or you see your report and it shows a negative um, change, a negative amount on the investing activities from the cash flow report, hey, might be okay. It's not because it's doing bad business, it's because there were a big purchase on equipment to make money, okay? Financing activities. This is very interesting from, for, uh, for, for the bankers and uh, as well for you. I mean, if it's, if, it's in, <laughs> if it's interesting for the bankers and for the investors, it's definitely interesting for you as well. So the financing activities will measure the activities that fund the company. Activities include when you issue stock, you, when you bring a partner, uh, maybe uh, you are paying out dividends to shareholders. So in this particular section, you're going to see the cash in from uh, loans or, uh, or you are issuing equity and the cash out that you are paying your shareholders or you are buying out debt or paying down debt. So in the financing activities, you're going to see when the money comes in. And the money can come in from many forms. In this particular section, 
you're going to see your investment. So the bankers are going to see, okay, how much money is the, is the owner putting into the business? How much cash is putting into the business? Okay, that's going to show up here. The net change shows activities that fund the company, pays debt and investors. So in this particular section, I want you to think, is it positive? Is it negative? It really depends. Let's bring some scenarios. If you're putting in the money and you are just um, starting the business, okay, probably it's going to look negative because you are putting in money, you are taking loans, okay? But with the passing of time and your business gets going and starts um, getting some... Um, getting some momentum, it will have to show how you are paying down those debts, okay? So you can see the money that is being paid out to the owners, that is being paid out uh, to the lenders, and that you are definitely um, complying or or following up your obligations, your debt obligations, okay? So you can definitely see that different sections of the cash flow are for different purposes. It will tell a different story, even though it's the same report. So when we begin, we try to simplify the cash flow report as just money coming in, money coming out. But now that you know the sections of the cash flow, you can really understand why it is subdivided into three sections. You know, the operating, and then the financing, and then uh, the investing activities, okay? Because those sections definitely tell a different story about the business. Operations, it will tell how the business is maintaining itself. Sales from products and services minus the money that it's needed to provide those business and services. Is there a positive cash flow? Is the business uh, have a good business model that is profitable? On the, um, um, on the financing activities, we have the information about the money coming in, maybe from you, from the bankers, from lenders, uh, and how you are paying down, how you are complying with those financial obligations, okay? Um, in, the, in the investing section, it's more related to equipment, to how you are handling, or what assets you were uh, you need it to buy in order to operate your business. And in that particular section, remember, it's okay to be negative sometimes. Okay? Why? Because there's much more money coming out than coming in sometimes. But definitely the, the overall net change has to be positive at the end. Okay? So now that you understand the sections, there's another, um, let me see if I can go back too much. Um, there's another section or model, let's call it uh, methodology, about cash flow and conversion cycle. This is, uh, looks pretty simple, but it can provide you a lot of insight, okay? So focus on the diagram. Cash in, coming in. Okay, cash out, coming out on red. Okay, we start with number one. You got some cash. You provide, number two is you provide materials and services or products. Maybe it goes to accounts payable, meaning that you sell it on, uh, on credit. Well, number four, you get paid. On oh, number five, uh, 
sorry, number four where is where you pay for your products. Number five on the blue lines is where you start selling your products. And maybe you sell it on credit. And then you get the cash. So yellow represents the money that you put out, the cash out. The blue represents the blocks that the money is coming in. Okay. And there's always two steps. But well, not always, but in many businesses, you sell, but it's a different story to get the money to the bank. And uh, a lot of businesses, uh, sometimes there are uh, contractors that are, um, you know, mostly in construction and sometimes on services when you have contracts with big corporations and, uh, for example, the casinos and things like that, this cash flow conversion, it will really have all the blocks to go around from two to three to four to five to six to one in some businesses maybe there's no uh only five and six as soon as you sell you get paid that's perfect but you have to understand the cycle the conversion cycle of your own business so if you have a short conversion cycle, you can quickly sell inventory and turn it into cash. You don't have that time value of money component uh, affecting you. You know, so basically their product becomes cash and you can uh, start the wheel again in a, in a limited time, in a limited period of time. If you have a long cash conversion cycle, you probably need more time you're gonna need more reserves you're gonna need more uh you're gonna carry some inventory unsold and you have to worry about managing inventory um for example we have um a um, client that uh they work on warehousing for restaurants so they are supplier of restaurants we have these lettuce we have these milks you know uh, we have to get it moving in and out in and out Sometimes they work on a pre-order basis, but sometimes they don't. They know that they have an expected demand for something, so they stuck up. But sometimes that, that demand doesn't, um, doesn't happen. So they, are, they have inventory that they have to move quick because basically it's cash sitting around in the, in the warehouse that uh, has an expiration date. Imagine if the bills <laughs> would come with an expiration date. It's like uh, those uh, gift cards, you know, you have to spend the money real quick. Otherwise it goes back to zero. Um, that's a good example actually, yeah. So try to make a diagram and try to understand how much time or what is the process from two to five. For example, okay, when you buy the materials or the services and you sell them, or from five to one, when you make the sale, and how long does it take you to get the cash? Or from three to four, you know, when you sell on credit and you get the money. It is very, very important to understand your. Uh, your um, sale terms. You know, there are some uh, businesses that might uh, accept uh, only cash for certain products or uh, net 30 or sometimes use credit cards. And then you have to factor in the cost of the credit cards, which are not cheap lately. Um, everything that uh, you want to do <laughs> faster now, it costs you money. So, um, Definitely, um, you have to understand that. Then you have uh, some businesses that are involved in factoring, basically selling the debt or the accounts uh, receivable, but it's also uh, expensive. Definitely, um, you take a hit from, um, from the original amount to whatever you get at the end. So try to understand this particular conversion cycle. Um, 
Any questions so far? Any um, any experiences? You know, um, is it is it quick to get from two to five in your industry? Is it uh, kind of uh, painful to get paid when you uh, sell on credit? Remember, if you're in the financing industry, <laughs> uh, you know, be careful because uh, sometimes in the process of making the sale, because you don't want to lose the customer, you become like a lending company. Uh, where you have to absorb the costs and you're not charging any interest. So be careful when when you jump or start making those mistakes. So we learn a little bit about the cash flow. It can definitely help you on the planning, budgeting, and control. Budgeting, you have to um imagine or try to understand the cycle of your cash flow so you can budget and you can estimate sometimes estimate uh what are the bills that cannot wait the ones that can wait and uh you start getting um more of a timing component uh it will definitely help you visualize the liquidity uh Nobody likes to pay late fees, um, you know, when unnecessary fees that uh, can only can be avoided with better cash flow management. And plan for future investments also. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the construction um, business is that. I mean, the tools and the, and the equipment has a certain uh, time frame life time frame so you're gonna have to replace some equipment you're gonna have to replace uh materials and that goes from ink to paper to uh everything else you know we consume goods while we provide services also we consume goods when we don't even make the sales you know gas to mileage to or insurance to keep the doors open, uh, to make a proposal, to make quotes. Uh, so try to keep track of those expenses and uh, definitely maybe the use of technology can help or uh, try to avoid and get to know your customer, filter your customer better before going all the way to you know Boulder City and coming back for an estimate. Limitations. Like we said at the beginning, every re we don't have the perfect report. We need the combination of reports. And the cash flow statement has its limitations. And uh, many of you all know of this, but uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't tell you how much is your accounts payable. Okay, that's on your balance sheet. The cash flow doesn't tell you how much money people owe you. It just must, it just shows how much money you came in into the business. The balance sheet will tell you what is owed to you. It is not the same as an income statement that shows your income based on accounting and tax rules. Cash flow is it doesn't follow too many rules. You know, it's money coming in, money coming out. And your bank statement is basically, for many of you, uh, your cash report, okay? It doesn't separate into sections, but it shows the money in and the money out. And that is very different from the income statement, which follows accounting rules and uh, tax rules. Depreciation of equipment, which is a non-cash expense. Depreciation is um, an accounting rule where you factor in the usage, the depreciation of the assets, and it becomes an expense. So um, it follows certain accounting rules and tax rules where you can, uh, maybe you bought 
something from um, $50,000 and it shows in your bank, but then you decide that you're going to uh, depreciate it over five years, for example. So income statement and the cash flow is not going to show that 50,000 is going to show in the income statement the five the over the five year period and on the cash flow the 50,000 coming out um those are just some examples that um can help you understand why the cash flow is important but it is not the only report you have to rely on the other reports as well that's why they are here we haven't come up with a full financial overall report. I don't think that's even possible. Um, but um, any questions so far before we're going to jump into some examples? This is my first webinar doing and standing up. So like moving around. Um, good to go. Let's go. Good to so, go. Oh, who's this? Mike. Hey, Mike. Good to go. Good to go. Okay. Looking good, Juan. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. So the balance of the cash from your bank statements does not represent your loss. Okay. And I'm going to just hold that thought. Okay. Let's go through this example. Uh you can see my mouse, right, Mike? Correct. Okay. So, in this figure, we have the cash flow. Okay. Then um, we have a beginning clash. Let me check something here. Oh, W, publisher, remove more, remote control. Okay. So, on this column, we have the cash flow. We have a beginning cash of 40. We bought some product. Then we make some sales. We pay rent, bought office supplies, and I took some money for myself. You know, I'm the owner. I need to get paid. I need to live uh, by. So at the end, my bank account shows five bucks. Okay. But now let's look at the income stream. Beginning cash is not a profit doesn't come in sales purchase of goods this is the 40 from here rent then um uh, hold on I have some here the office the office supplies should be also right here 15 but uh, at the end we have to come up with a negative 10 so what it happens is even though you look at um, you look at a loss, you're gonna tell, you know what, Juan, how come I have a loss if I still have uh, some money in my in my bank? You know? So why is that difference? It's because you follow the cash flow rules and the PL, the profit and loss shows another rules, okay? So um, definitely you have a negative here and then it differs from your bank account, okay? So in this one, we have a different story. Cash flow of 20, 40 product, 80, sales, 20 rent, five of office supplies, 30 owner um, owner withdrawal, because, hey, we make sales of 80 in this particular scenario. So I'm taking more money for myself. So we have a net uh, cash flow of five. On the profit and loss, we got something different. We got the sales of products, 80. We got the cost of the products, 40, 20, five office supplies. Here's the office supplies in this example. And 15 as your profit. 
So if you are doing your taxes or you are doing a report on the profit and loss, you're going to see, okay, I have 15 in profit, but I have only five bucks in my bank account. Juan, you got to be wrong. I mean, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. But it's because of different reports will they will will measure different things in a different way. So your cash flow will measure the five bucks that you have uh, left on your bank account. But the PL shows different story. Okay. Because the beginning cash flow of that you put in, it doesn't come up as income. It is an owner's investment, doesn't belong to a PL. Okay. Owner withdrawal, when you take it out, in the case of, uh, we're not talking about salary situation here, we're talking about uh, a Schedule C or a one single member LLC, where you take owner withdrawal or from a partnership, and that is not a deductible expense. So in that particular case, you end up with a profit of 15 when actually you have uh, five bucks in the bank account. And this scenario is very important because I see in clients that they do not save for the taxes ahead. 15 in profit means that you're going to have to pay taxes on that. So you, you got to be prepared on, from your cash flow perspective to pay those taxes. And we're talking about only 15 bucks. But let's say that you, know, the, you start using... 15,000, okay? And 15,000 times 15.3%, uh, uh, that is FICA taxes only, you definitely need that money put aside. And that's how the cash flow projections and the cash flow planning will help you out. And this is when you combine your profit and loss and your cash flow reports the information from both of them and plan for future payouts. Um, any questions so far before we begin with a bigger example? Okay, let's move on. This is a bigger example. Okay, we're gonna start with um, we're going to put into practice here the different parts of the cash flow report. See, we got the um, annotate. Let's see. No. Ba, 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 mouse light. Oh, let me do eraser spotlight. There we go. So we have um, right here the net cash flow operations. We have the net cash flow from investing and the net cash flow from financing. The green totals are gonna tell you the total for each section on green, okay? The net amount is gonna be here in blue. And in red here, we have taxes because we promise you we're going to talk about taxes and how to use the cash flow to plan for this. So at the beginning, we're going to have the cash flow in from operations, which is your sales of products and services at up to 200. Then the total cash out from operations, 39 and 10, are from all these transactions. You know, we got marketing, we got utilities, we got everything else. Also, we got salaries. In this particular example, we are saying that we have an employee, we're paying 1,000 bucks, but the net check, it's only 830. Why? Because we never paid, if we wanna pay somebody's salary of 1,000, they never get a thousand. <laughs> I mean, we have experienced that before. <laughs> you never get the full amount. They take the taxes out. So what happens with those taxes? The employer keeps those taxes and the employer has to remit that to the IRS later on. So it is definitely a cash flow planning issue. 
okay? We got also sales tax. We are selling products. So we have to collect sales tax on what? Give it to the sales tax department, okay? And, uh, and also uh, following up the example of a Schedule C business owner or single member LLC, you uh, have to pay your estimated taxes. We are in the business because we wanna make money, okay? And when we make money, we have to make estimated taxes for income taxes. So if you are making payments, it's because you're doing something right, okay? If you're not paying taxes, there's something wrong. <laughs> you're not making enough money, okay? So definitely you have to uh, plan for those. T paying taxes is just the consequence or the product of doing something right in your business. Okay, so um, at this, at the end, if we go down to, 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 we have a total net cash monthly positive of 2682, okay? But if you are analyzing this cash flow, if, if this is, if you're the banker and you're looking at this, Hey banker, you know, I have a net cash flow from all my sections, 2,600. My business is doing good. So you start looking at the sections. Okay, why is the net cash flow positive? I can see products and services. They sold some stuff, but their operational expenses were more because their net, net cash flow from operations is negative, okay? So sales are not supporting the general expenses for now. Purchase of equipment, A, the business is just starting. It makes sense, 36 negative, not bad, not too much of a big purchase, but uh, we understand why it's negative. Net cash flow from financing, oh, Okay, so there are some loans in and the business owner put some money as well. Okay, now I understand why the net cash flow is positive. It's because the business owner took some loans and he put some money in and that keeps a positive balance in the bank account. It's not because the business is making money because if I look at the net cash flow from operation, it's not making money so far. So, okay, let's move on. Next month, we can see the net cash from operations is positive. That's good. And also I can see that the taxes, the compliance, it's taken care of. Sales tax, 12 bucks. This 12 bucks comes from the product sales of the previous month. Payroll deposit. Okay. The payroll deposit comes out of the um, money from the salary. 300 estimated taxes. Okay. Why is this for? Oh, this is from the money that the owner took out for personal, for, for, uh, personal purposes. Okay, the money was taken out, so there should be some estimated taxes there. But the total net cash flow is negative. Okay, but let's see. The business owner is paying itself, 2000 and 2000. Didn't take any loans, additional loans. So maybe this, the products and sales is keeping up, is growing, and the net cash flow operations is working out. On the other month, the cash flow from operations is even better. There was some um, purchase of equipment on the owner withdrawal came down. So it didn't took as much money as before. So 
uh, that can be uh, an issue or not an issue. But what becomes an issue is that you have $11 in your bank account. So there has to be some adjustments. You have to start making more sales or you're going to have to start cutting back in expenses or something else. So cash flow operations, things are picking up, more sales. The operational side is more, is, go, is going down. So less expenses from operation, that's good. So we have a net cash from operations, which is bigger. That's even better. Um, and the owner is a star to pay down the loans right here. Remember that we took 12,000 bucks in loans. Now it's time to pay it back. And the owner had to put a little bit of money into the bank account because just to keep the balances open. If the owner didn't put this 500 bucks, the account balance would be negative. So that's why, or the owner should have taken less money out of the business either way. But now you're going to start seeing options and you're going to start seeing your commitments and you're going to start seeing how and what you can move around. Maybe you shouldn't take a, a money um, money out of the business until you pay down that loan. But are you prepared to do that? I mean, you have personal expenses. You have to come up, pay for rent, which is not deductible. You have to pay for food. The business has to support your, uh, your personal style. Otherwise, it's going to just consume the savings out of you. So the cash flow projections will help you to keep track of this. Uh, of this. So we're going to move along because we have uh, some limited time. But this is just an example where you can, uh, where you should divide your cash flow in the different sections. You can see and monitor why is the money coming out? What is the purpose? And uh, you can help budget for the future. If you make money on service, on product sales, you have to put that money aside of the sales tax. If you pay your employee, you have to put that money aside from the FICA taxes, your employer matching. Uh, you're going to have unemployment insurance. You're going to have workers comp. So those things can add up to the projections. Um, marketing, is it taking really... Um, effect is it do i have a return on investment on my marketing um avoid late fees make sure you are ready to start paying down that debt is it a good idea to get into debt in the first place okay so definitely those things can help you um visualize and and if you divide into sections i found this for myself and please let me know if this helps you. But when I divide into sections and the purpose of why the money, it makes more sense. It makes, it's easier to make decisions. So cash flow projections, planning, pitfalls, you can name it either way. Poor cash flow management or push or poor skills. Um, can definitely affect your business, okay? You have to understand your cash flow. Uh, is it, yeah, don't start with too little money. Um, for example, right now that there's a lot of business owners asking for loans, they decide that they need 100,000 in loans because that's their budget. And they get a loan for 30,000 or for 30 or for 70,000. Their budget was 100 to make things happen. Sometimes they get 70, uh, they jump. So it's like jumping to a pool with, you know, one arm loose and the other arm attached. You know, it's going to get harder to swim. <laughs> I don't know if you can make it. So make sure you 
have enough money to run your business to keep it aside, alive. Pay yourself. Plan for your personal expenses. Sometimes I see that um, we have a profit in the business. We have forty thousand dollars in in profit in a business, but the person had to use the money for personal expenses. And we have mortgages, we have kids, we have to feed them, you know? Uh, so that 40,000 is spent on non-deductible expenses in the business and there's no enough cash flow to pay for taxes. And that becomes a problem where you have to make a, a payment plan with IRS, interest penalties and things like that. Not pricing properly. Failure to include all necessary items when setting prices. This is also when you start using credit card, when you start using uh, financing. Make sure you are planning for that. Sometimes um, prices do not include um, the... Let me make you an example. You do four budgets, okay, four estimates. You drive to four houses, you only close one, but you have to cover the expenses of running the other three that didn't convert into, into service. Still, you're gonna have expenses. Still, the catch is coming out. So when you price something, the cost of getting one client Sometimes you have to prospect to five to get one. So make sure you include that cost as well. Otherwise, it's going to drain out your cash flow and you're not going to see it. Plan equipment purchases for replacement or expansion uh, in the construction or the landscaping and medical industry and things like that. Uh, some Business owners do not want to pay for insurance. But if that thing breaks down, you know, that's your money machine, that, mach that machine that you have in the business. So uh, use some insurance. If you are not prepared to come up with, um, with additional cash, if anything, anything breaks down, that's the purpose of insurance. Uh, sometimes in the personal side, the insurance doesn't make too much sense, but on the business, it definitely has a purpose. Do not postpone paying estimated taxes. Uh, there's a definitely misconception about you have to wait until the end of the year to pay your taxes. Uh, we are in the system of pay as you earn tax system. So you have to combine your cash flow and your income statement and make sure you are compliant with your estimated taxes. Do you know, it's not like Christmas when you're gonna, tax season is not like Christmas you, when you get, you know, good surprises only. It can be the other <laughs> type of surprises. So uh, plan ahead. Put aside payroll and sales tax. We saw that in the example. That money doesn't belong to you. Doesn't belong to the business. It belongs to the IRS, to the employee, and the sales tax department. Okay. Uh, do not overestimate revenue. Set your sales terms. Not a lender. Like we said, um, you are not in the lending business. Some people are, but if you are not in the lending business, don't jump or by default fall into that industry and you become a lender and you don't have no money coming in. Uh, it's okay to do free advertisement, free samples, but you have to set your terms. Keep a good relationship with your lender, credit line. Right now we know, we understand that having a credit line, it is very, very important. And apply when things are good, you know, Build that relationship with your bankers now when things are good, when you have a solid um, credit line, a credit score, uh, when you can right now ask for that, for that line of credit, 
maybe have some credit cards aside as a backup plan, um, you know, with those 0% interest and things like that. If you don't use them, it's okay. But to have them when you need it, it really pays off. When things get hard, you know, it, it's a different conversation with the lender. You know, uh, they, <laughs> they might not be as welcoming <laughs> As before, when things were, you know, you're going to ask more questions, more statements and things like that. So definitely something to take in consideration. Make friends when your things are good. That's my presentation for today. Um, I really hope that we can bring some insight. So um, this is time for questions. Let us know if you have any. Share your experiences. Are you in charge of your cash flow? not uh, <laughs> nobody's gonna admit that they're not but, you know <laughs> just thinking you know Maybe who you are. are thank you thank you for the messages we appreciate your feedback 